I'm Ian Somerville and in this video I'm going to be talking about an instance of what's thought to be cyber warfare, a piece of malware called the Stuxnet worm. First of all, let me remind you what is meant by cyber warfare. I talked in a previous video about different kinds of cyber attack where the intention is to, for an attacker is to, to damage uh, <clears throat> something, equipment or data held by whoever is being attacked. Well, cyber warfare is where we have a cyber attack, but one of the people involved, perhaps both, are nation states. The Stuxnet worm is a very specialised piece of computer malware that was specifically designed to target equipment used for uranium enrichment. This involves a process of centrifuging uranium gas and the equipment was made by a German company called Siemens. It had a SCADA based control system and the worm malware targeted the control system. Siemens equipment was used by Iran for uranium enrichment and they claimed that this was for peaceful purposes. Others believed that this was part of a process of building a nuclear bomb and that's caused particular concern in the United States and Israel. The aim of the Stuxnet malware was to damage or destroy the uranium centrifuges and therefore slow down or stop the uranium enrichment program. Again, let me remind you what's a worm. A worm is a piece of malware that can spread from one computer to another without any external intervention. It doesn't need a vector like an email message to spread. The target of the worm was Iran's uranium enrichment facilities and it is thought that there were two such facilities in Iran. The worm was designed to attack uranium enrichment equipment controlled by a SCADA system. This SCADA system was a generic SCADA system, part of a family of systems made by Siemens, but it had been modified to take into account the particular characteristics of the uranium enrichment equipment. The worm was specifically targeted at that software. It spread to, but it did not damage in any way, other systems using a similar control system. What the worm did <coughs> was that it, it took over the control from the existing SCADA system. It sent signals to the PLCs, which were controlling the individual centrifuges, and it caused these to speed up and slow down the centrifuges. This introduced vibrations and essentially the centrifuges shook themselves to bits. So they were destroyed or damaged by these vibrations. The worm also blocked warning signals back to the operators of the SCADA system so that they were not aware that these vibrations were occurring and therefore could not shut down the system. The way the worm got into the system was through Windows systems that were used for configuration. I discussed this as a way of getting into uh, SCADA systems, how although these systems may not be connected to the internet, they are connected to other systems and these, this is a way in which they can be penetrated. The worm used four different vulnerabilities to get into the system three of which had been previously unknown. What this meant was that by fixing one of the vulnerabilities, it did not stop the spread of the worm and the <coughs> Iranian operators had to understand exactly how the worm worked before they could stop its spread and remove it. In order to spread from one system to another, the worm took advantage of a vulnerability in the printing system and it used this to actually jump from one configuration system to another and hence to infect a number of uranium enrichment systems. This was based on peer-to-peer -peer transfer. There was no need for those systems to be connected to the internet. I talked before in my SCADA videos about the myth of the air gap, the notion that you can, if systems are not connected to the internet, then they are secure. Well, this Stuxnet worm illustrates how wrong this is. It's thought that the way in which the worm was, in, was introduced into the system was through USB sticks and it took advantage of a vulnerability 
in the Windows operating system which allowed the penetration of malware through the USB port. It's not clear how the infected USB sticks got into the system. In all probability, it was probably because they were given away free or left lying around by an agent or something. We know that it's a natural human tendency when they get something like that to plug them in to see what's on them. And this looks like what has happened in this case. It's a warning. Be very careful of free USB sticks or, or, or anything that you find lying around. You really don't know what's going to be on them. The nature of these things is we don't know exactly what happened. The speculation is that between 900 and 1,000 centrifuges were destroyed by the actions of the worm. This is about 10% of the total, so it certainly didn't stop the uranium enrichment program. However, there's no question that it slowed it down significantly, both through damage to the centrifuges and to the need to shut down the equipment for a considerable period of time while the malware was removed from the control systems. Because of the complexity of this worm, the number of vulnerabilities that have been exploited, and the fact that the developers obviously had access to expensive uranium enrichment equipment, it's thought that the worm was developed by the intelligence agencies of nation states rather than by disaffected individuals. And it's the speculation through a number of remarks that have been made is that these were the United States and Israel who worked together to develop the malware. Another unproven speculation was that there was no intention for the worm to spread beyond Iran and beyond uranium enrichment equipment. However, a mistake was made in the development of the worm, which meant that it did spread and that significant infections have been reported in other countries such as India, Azerbaijan and Indonesia. It's also thought that the Stuxnet worm is not a single worm, but is a family of worms. And using similar vulnerabilities, this may have infected other equipment of different types. Again, speculation is that there is a, a, ver a variant of the worm called Duku, which has again infected significant numbers of systems in Iran. And this does not damage equipment, but rather collects information. It collects keystrokes and send these back, sends these back to some other server. And it's thought that this is used to collect information that may subsequently be used to penetrate systems. In summary then, the Stuxnet worm is one of the first examples that we know of of cyber warfare between nation states. Its intention was to damage Iran's uranium enrichment capability and hence slow down what is thought to be a nuclear bomb making program. It used a range of vulnerabilities to infect systems and it was introduced through USB sticks. These systems were not connected to the internet. It was successful in slowing down the program, but it certainly was not successful in stopping it. You can download the slides that accompany this video from my SlideShare account.